Prasad. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at the Oregon Health and Science University and the Knight Cancer Institute. I'm a practicing hematologist oncologist, and I hold appointments in the Department of Public Health and Preventive Medicine and a senior scholar in the Center for Healthcare Ethics. I'm here to talk to you today about our new paper, Characteristics of Exceptional and Super Responders to Cancer Drugs. Um, those of us in oncology or who follow cancer research uh, know that so-called N of 1 stories of exceptional and super responders have really fueled the enthusiasm for uh, precision and personalized medicine. Uh, one seminal case report occurred in the journal Science in 2012 uh, where authors described that a patient with metastatic bladder cancer, uh, a, no a malignancy known to have a dire prognosis, was treated with the mammalian target of rapamycin inhibitor Everlimus, had a dramatic tumor shrinkage, and that response lasts for a fairly long time. Uh, in subsequent genomic analysis, these group of researchers discovered loss of function mutations in TSC1, which is known to be implicated in the mTOR pathway. Thus, this case report made perfect biological sense, uh, it was quite compelling, and it encouraged many others to report their own experience with um, so-called exceptional responders to cancer drugs, as well as fueled many current initiatives, including the NCI's Exceptional Responders Initiative, which seeks to catalog a set of such exceptional responses. Since 2014, in fact, the NCI's Exceptional Responder Initiative has already cataloged over 70 cases, and hopefully uh, the results of that project will be able to be shared with the scientific community in a fairly short period of time. In our current investigation, we sought to augment the ongoing investigations of exceptional responders by conducting a systematic review of the published literature. We searched two very powerful search algorithms, uh, Medline as well as Google Scholar, uh, with a variety of search terms to identify a set of uh, 480, um, 480 some articles um, where the words exceptional and super responder uh, occurred. Uh, all these articles were read in full, and uh, from those articles we found a set of 32 case reports that uh, could legitimately be thought of as cases of exceptional and super responders. And that's where we dove in and focused on those case reports and tried to see could we identify any unique patterns and could we identify any, um, any other unique characteristics of reporting. We uh, made several important observations in our study. Uh, first, um, among these 32 cases of exceptional responders, we identified 19 different tumor types. Uh, the most common malignancy we found was metastatic renal cell cancer, followed by urothelial carcinoma, followed by perivascular epithelioid cell tumor. Uh, we also noted that there were a variety of uh, strategies used uh, in, the case, in the treatment of exceptional responders. Uh, about two-thirds of cases, 21 cases, used a single drug to induce response. Eight cases, or about a quarter, used a combination of drugs. Two cases used a drug in combination or consolidated by metastasectomy or surgery. Uh, and one case used a combination of drugs followed by consolidation with allogeneic stem cell transplant. The type of drug used in these case reports indeed fit with what many have observed. Uh, the use of targeted therapy was extremely common, occurring in 81% of cases, and the use of mammalian targeted rapamycin inhibitors, such as Everlimus, occurred in 50% of cases. We delved a little bit deeper into the data and we found the following observations. Um, 20 cases identified at least one potential culprit or driver genetic mutation. Um, six cases did not report the number of prior lines of treatment patients had received before undergoing the exceptional response. Um, 12 out of 26 cases uh, that did report number of prior lines of treatment, uh, patients had received two or more prior lines of therapy. Interestingly, only 15 out of 29 cases reported the best duration of response to a prior line of therapy, and the reason here that the denominator is 29 and not 32 is that three cases represented first-line treatment. Now, when the duration of response to a prior line of therapy was reported, uh, it was also um, fairly impressive. The median duration of response was eight months to a prior line of therapy, and shown in uh, figure three of our paper. Finally, we dove into uh, a unique uh, measurement, which we call the number of patients needed to be treated to observe the exceptional response. And by this we mean that if patients were being treated in an off-label use uh, in a clinic in a retrospective fashion, we wanted to know how many patients were treated similarly uh, before this one exceptional response was found and, found and reported. Um, or in cases where patients were treated on protocol as part of an ongoing phase one or early phase study, um, we wanted to know what was the end of that study. And in fact, we found that this was uh, generally poorly reported. Only 12 out of 32 cases reported the number of patients needed to be treated. And when they did report it, it ranged widely from three out of three consecutive patients to one out of uh, 151 patients, or just less than 1%. So what does this all mean? What uh, are the implications of our study? So let me try to break it down for you. Um, so I think that exceptional and super responders have occurred in the literature. They are quite impressive. 
Um, but I also think that we should acknowledge that there are many challenges with uh, generalizing from medical anecdote. And the history of medicine is replete with many false steps that were led by anecdote. And one way to better characterize these cases of exceptional and super responders is to know some of the information that we asked. For instance, when patients did respond well to a treatment, how many prior lines of therapy had they been treated with? Now, it's common in oncology to think that the more prior lines of therapy a patient had had, the more heavily pretreated they were, and thus the worse the prognosis. But in fact, something, uh, something paradoxical may be happening, that patients who have naturally indolent biology live long enough to be treated with more prior lines of therapy, and thus the number of prior lines of therapy is actually a proxy for indolent biology. The other thing that's interesting to know is what was the best duration of response to a prior therapy? Now, for an exceptional responder to e respond exceptionally to prior lines of therapy that don't act via the putative target mechanism suggests that perhaps these tumors are not exceptional responders to a unique drug, but exceptional responders to many classes of drugs or perhaps represent pan-sensitive tumor biology. Finally, a very important point is that these case reports need to report the number of patients treated similarly to observe the exceptional response. What this tells us as doctors is this tells us the denominator. How many patients do we have to treat with one of these novel agents in order to get an exceptional response? What should we expect? And the reason that's important is because the patients you treat who don't experience the exceptional response, they often re receive the harms of treatment without countervailing benefits. This helps get at the number needed to treat. So our conclusion of our paper is not that exceptional responders should not be reported. In fact, they should be reported. More case reports should be reported. We just suggest that when they are reported, that the measures that we talked about in our paper are, accompany those case reports. In order for oncologists to think better about exceptional responders, we need this basic information about um, how they did, how they did before, um, and how many people were treated similarly to find this exceptional responder. This should be part of a standardized set of reporting criteria for exceptional and super responders. There's a lot of enthusiasm for molecular profiling to drive personalized medicine, and in part uh, that enthusiasm is necessary and uh, is fueling ongoing research initiatives. Uh, it should also be remembered that um, our paper now appears in the context of some recent um, m slightly disappointing studies, uh, the randomized trial SHIVA uh, from the French group which found uh, no benefit from molecular profiling versus uh, physician choice uh, in terms of relapse refractory solid tumor. Uh, additionally, uh, the results of the basket study by Hyman and colleagues in the New England Journal, which generally showed um, poor response to BRAF inhibitors uh, across a range of malignancies. Thus, I think a full understanding of drugging um, driver mutations in cancer uh, will take years to come, it will be a very complicated phenomenon, and will require very detailed and meticulous reporting in, in this and other published reports. And we encourage um, more published reports, more data sharing, uh, more standardized reporting criteria, and more transparency uh, in the cases uh, that fuel interest in a, in a legitimately exciting uh, field of precision medicine, but a field that should also um, be held to the same standard as conventional medicine. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.